Hey students, it's Emily Poole. Let's talk about topic 4.2, the scientific revolution. Now, if you remember from my last video, it is important to note that these early scientists were not trying to directly challenge the power of the Catholic Church. These scientists were concerned in figuring out the intricacies of how the world works, because if they could do that, they could ascribe more glory to God. While the church deemed Galileo a heretic, was he? I digress. We need to start by contextualizing this with one of my least favorite historical characters of all time, Galen. Galen was a Roman physician who came up with the idea of the humoral theory of disease. Students picture this. In the body, there are four humors or four liquids. You got yellow bile, black bile, blood, and phlegm. And if those things are imbalanced in your body, it means that something is wrong and you have diseases. Galen's solution to fixing any kind of bodily ailment was to even out those humors somehow. But students, I need you to think about this. What's black bile? I don't know. What's yellow bile? I mean, urine. Cool. Okay. What's blood? We all got that phlegm. Nose. Okay. Which of those is the easiest to get rid of at any given time? Did you answer blood? Because that is correct. So what did this lead to in Europe from like, I don't know, the 400s to honestly the 1800s? Bloodletting. You might not be a scientist, but you, as a teenager in today's world, know that getting rid of blood in your body when you are sick does not help. So Galen is real questionable in my book, but it does then make me love Andreas Vesalius even more because he and William Harvey dissected humans once that was legal again. And then with their dissection of humans, they were able to figure out that the circulatory system is in fact one connected system within the body. But the fact that the body is an integrated system went against Galen's humoral theories of disease, which then made science better. Well, that is looking at anatomy and the human body, but what about scientists who are looking at the heavens? Let's talk about Copernicus, Galileo, and Newton. Polish astronomer Copernicus, right before he died, published this theory that is called the heliocentric theory or sun-centered theory, in which he posited that the sun is the center of the solar system and not the earth. Galileo then proved Copernicus's heliocentric theory with his telescope, and then that got Galileo in a lot of trouble with the Catholic Church a continuation in European history from the start of this course until now. People like Galileo, like Martin Luther, do things that indirectly challenge the power of the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church puts them on trial. And in both cases, the Catholic Church said, Luther, Galileo, recant. Luther says, no, Galileo says, okay. And then he spends the rest of his life on house arrest. Galileo discovered that bodies will move in a straight line unless they are acted upon by some outside force. And Kepler, another scientist that you need to know in this unit, discovered that planets orbit in ellipses around the sun. And y'all, it was Sir Isaac Newton who discovered that the one thing that can make both of these statements true at the same time is gravity. His three laws of motion essentially describe gravity and gravitational pull. And also he invented calculus and he wrote all that stuff down into a book called Principia Mathematica. This Newtonian synthesis, this bringing of ideas of Galileo and Kepler together into one coherent statement that there is universal gravitational pull dominate scientific thought until the 20th century. This is a huge change from thought that dominated the Middle Ages, which is that the earth exists in one plane and the heavens exist in another plane. And Newton in his Newtonian synthesis are combining those things together, that the heavens and the earth are connected. By the way, Newton, devout Anglican, he believed that God in his infinite wisdom created the most beautiful and intricate world system that connects everything together. We've talked about the body, we've talked about gravity and the world. Let's talk about the scientific method in general. You're all high school students, you know what the scientific method is. Do you wanna know who came up with that? Francis Bacon. Prior to Bacon and his inductive method of reasoning, which means that you start out with an observation and then test and experiment based on that observation, the thing that dominated scientific thought since Rome was Aristotle's idea of deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is the opposite of inductive reasoning. So you start with a general premise and then draw a specific conclusion. Whereas in inductive reasoning, you have a specific premise, your hypothesis, and then you draw a conclusion. I'm not sure if this helps, but I'm gonna say it anyway. One of Aristotle's classic syllogisms is that all men are more 
mortal. Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. That is a great example of deductive reasoning. And students, what you do in your science classes now is the opposite. You do inductive reasoning. You do the scientific method starting with a hypothesis. Both Francis Bacon and Rene Descartes, don't worry, we're going to get to him later when we talk about the Enlightenment, work together to promote the reliance on mathematics and experimentation in any scientific field. While all of these changes are happening in the world of science, not everyone's on board. There are still traditional Aristotelian scientists, there are still traditional alchemists, and a lot of these scientists, like Newton, still believe that the cosmos is governed by spiritual forces or by some kind of supreme being. Students, in just this one topic, there are many people that you need to know according to the AP Euro CED. To end this video, let's see if we remember who they are and what they did. You need to know Copernicus, Galileo, Newton, Harvey, Galen, Francis Bacon, and Rene Descartes. You should also know Kepler and Vesalius. If you didn't remember any of that or you just need extra help remembering people in general, please check out my ultimate review packet linked in the description below because it has everything that you need to be successful, not only in your class, but also in the AP test come May. This helped. And as always, students, you can do it. I believe in you.